could start with uh, 1944, March 19th, when the Germans logged into Hungary. And uh, five days after, on the 24th of March, uh, two Gestapo men came to our apartment, made a big search of, of the whole place, and then took my father away. Soon we had to leave, leave our apartment, and we had to move to a so-called Jewish house, where they, you know, it was crowded, and we had to move in with other people in the same place. And later that became part of the ghetto, but we didn't stay there because um, my mother somehow got hold of a Swiss uh, Schutzpass. People who, who got this uh, Schutzpass, a Swedish or Swiss, were supposed to be protected from the German and the Hungarian Nazis. But it really didn't work because uh, on the 3rd of December, uh, these Hungarian Nazis, uh, Milos, marched in with their guns and they, they ordered uh, people out, uh, especially the young women, like my mother and, and other people in the same, same house and the same apartment, and, and they just, just marched them away. And uh, later, after the war, I found out that my mother uh, was taken to Bergen-Belsen and, and, and she, she never survived. There was an old couple who had a, a even younger grandchild, and they, they put us into a Red Cross place for children. Hopefully that would be another protection. But then, then I heard the Hungarian Nazis come and uh, making plans that we were all marched, to be marched to the Danube, the river crossing Budapest, uh, to be shot, which we knew very well because we heard the shots every now and then. So quickly, I, I took that girl and then we ran back to the, the house, the, the Swiss house. Wallenberg, I think, uh, threatened uh, some leading Hungarian Nazis that they would be uh, charged with uh, war crimes if, if they blow up the ghetto. You know, many, many people survived this way. And uh, after that, uh, because I had no, no parents, uh, some, somebody decided I should be put into an orphanage. And at, uh, in August 1945, the orphanage went back to Budapest. And first thing I, I was, I tried to go back to our, our department just to see if anybody uh, survived. And somehow I found my father. He had no money, we had nothing, you know, and uh, he passed away in, in 1953 uh, at the age of 58 because uh, probably he, he wasn't really very, very healthy after all, all the torture and, and uh, things that he went through during the deportation. Unfortunately, anti-Semitism is, is not led. As a matter of fact, it's getting worse and worse all over the world. And, and it would be good if, if people would, would consider what it leads to and, and to avoid uh, genocide like, like it happens all the time.